Hey everybody, uh, today is a video that I've been promising for a while. We're going to be brewing a batch of beer. Um, I'm not going to show you my whole equipment setup. I'll talk about it a little bit as I go through. We're going to be brewing an all grain brew in a bag method today. And there's a long process to doing it. It's, it'll take me about five hours to do. The first thing I'm going to do to start out with is get my yeast out of the refrigerator and um, activate it. So there is a nutrient pack inside this yeast and if you feel around the bag, you can feel it in there. What I'm gonna do is kind of smack it and break that package. Yep, it broke, okay. And just make sure here. And then kind of shake it around a little bit. And I'm actually gonna put this in the house um, where it's not gonna get damaged and uh, over the course of the next couple of hours, this is going to warm up to room temperature and the package is going to swell as the yeast in the package uh, starts to come kind of out of a little bit of hibernation and start working again. So I'll show you what the pack looks like right now and you can see it's pretty thin, barely stand on its own base. Uh, a couple of hours from now, the whole thing is going to be swollen out and it look, it'll look more like a balloon than a flat little package here. This is uh, Y Yeast 1056 American Ale yeast. And the beer we're going to be brewing with this yeast today is a, it's an IPA from a Northern Brewer All Grain Kit. Now, what that means basically is instead of me putting the recipe together, what they've done is they've gotten all of the hops and all of the grain together just in one box, ready to go. Um, it is pretty much the recipe that I would use anyway. So it's a lot easier just to go with the kit sometimes and a lot cheaper than to uh, try to put together a whole recipe. I have put together my own recipes in the past and they've turned out uh, fairly decent for the most part. Um, but today I'm going to be using an all grain kit recipe from uh, Northern Brewer and that is the company that I order most of my ingredients through. Alright, since I don't have a grain mill, I choose to have my grain milled either by the home brew shop that I buy it from or um, through Northern Brewer. They op offer a uh, milled option. So I've got all my hops together in this little package and there are six ounces of hops going into this beer. And uh, what should be about 13 and a half pounds of grain. Set that aside. So the grain comes double bagged, which is nice because it tends to leak out a little bit. Uh, we have 11 pounds of two row, a pound and a half of Munich malt, and a pound of caramel 60. That's going to form our base beer that we will um, add the hops and yeast to after a while. You do want to use grain pretty soon after you get it if it's milled because it will go stale after a while. I had some grain milled and uh, ready to go for a batch of beer a couple months ago and I didn't get around to brewing it. I ended up having to throw that grain out which is kind of an expensive, um, it's, it's a waste really because this kit all together with the hops and everything uh, ran me about $43 which is not bad at all considering you get about five gallons of beer four and a half to five gallons of beer out of this batch. One thing I want to make really clear before we get going here too much, this is not really meant to be an instructional video at all. Um, it's been since, this is, uh, this is the end of March of 2019. I haven't brewed since August of 2018. So it's been quite a while. I'm rusty. Um, you're probably going to see that in the video here, especially if you're a more experienced brewer. Now, if you haven't brewed before and you're a beer drinker, I would encourage you to try brewing your own beer. The setup that I have here is totally not necessary for your first batch. I've been brewing for uh, about four years now, and I've kind of accumulated bits and pieces over time. But I started out with about a $200 kit, and um, I brewed several batches of really good beer with that kit before I moved on to some of this more advanced equipment. We are going to be using a brew in a bag method today. Um, I will get into more of what that exactly means once we get to the actual brewing. First, I'm gonna go through and clean off all my equipment. Now, I, I washed it before I put it away. 
but because it's been sitting since August, it's collected all kinds of uh, dust and mouse poo and whatever from sitting in my basement. So I'm going to go through and wash everything so that it's clean. Now in this video, there's going to be two levels of clean that we want everything to be to. Uh, clean and sanitized. If I mess up at some point and say that something is sterile or sterilized, that is a mistake. We are not actually sterilizing anything. Um, because we're not getting to temperatures or um, pressures necessary for sterilization. We're not killing every single living thing. As soon as we turn out the flame at the end of the boil, everything needs to be sanitized. Um, and we're going to sanitize using a, uh, a sanitizing wash. Um, the, what I use is a, a mixture of star sand, which is um, a food grade sanitizer that is uh, really made for brewing and I use it all the time and I've had really good luck with it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get everything washed up. I'm not going to bore you with all of that. I'm going to get everything washed up and um, I will come back to you when it's time to start heating water. So at some points in today's video you're probably going to see me referring to my computer and that is because I'm using uh, an online program called Brewer's Friend. So on this Brewer's Friend program, I can go in and put in my recipe and put in my targets and it helps me keep track of all my steps and how much water I need to use at which step and it's just a really easy way for me to keep track of everything. Uh, so I can go right over here to this water requirements tab and it breaks down uh, what I need to use. So if I go into this um, mash calculator, I'm gonna put in and let's go to, let's put in a 1.25 quarts per pound. And that's gonna tell me how much water I need to add at which step. Um, let's see. Our ambient temperature is, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna say it's 68 degrees. And this is gonna tell me uh, what temperature I need to heat the water so that it comes down to our target temperature of 152 degrees. It's really handy for that. Um, and from what I have found, it's really accurate. It, uh, every time I heat the water to that temperature and then add the grain that brings the temperature down, um, I'm within just a couple of degrees of my target temperature and I can hit it really easily. So we're gonna start by heating 16.9 quarts, or we're gonna go with 17. Um, of water and then when I click right here add strike water then it will add that to um, a uh, tracker of my water volume and then I can see um, how much water I still need to add and that's really going to come in handy when we start adjusting temperatures. Now the reason I've gone with 1.25 quarts per pound instead of 1.5 or even 2 quarts per pound is because we've got a high volume of grain um, and I want to be able to adjust my temperature later on in the mash so that we can be in our target temperature at all times. And if I do that and use extra water volume um, of boiling water to adjust the temperature, then what I have is um, I'll get so much volume of water in my mash that I don't have any volume left over to sparge with and I won't be able to boil it down enough. Um, so we're kind of we're gonna kind of take an educated guess um, from past brewing experiences and we're going to use this uh, water volume tracker to help keep us on track. Um, I hope we can. Water chemistry is one thing that I do not have down nearly as well as I'd like to. Um, I have not been able to get an accurate reading of uh, my well water and what kind of chemistry and mineral makeup is in that water. Because of that, um, and I am concerned that the water in it is probably uh, too hard, it's got too much mineral content in it, I'm gonna be using half bottled water um, from these five gallon Primo water jugs and then half water from my tap. 
The reason I'm not using all bottled water like this is because I'm concerned that it doesn't have enough minerals for the yeast and the grain to work on. Um, and I'm not going to get into all that right now. That's way too deep for this brewing session. But I'm going to use half water from um, the jug then and half water from the tap in this initial mash. And then after that, I'm probably just going to use water from uh, the jug. We need uh, 17 quarts of water. We're going to do um, 9 quarts from our bottled water and then um, 8 from the tap. I'm pouring these into my 10-gallon uh, tall boy kettle here, and we're making a 5-gallon batch, so I like to have a 10-gallon kettle. Um, if I were making a like 7.5-gallon batch, I could probably still use this, but it would be cutting it close. You'll see why after a while. And I'm not being super precise about this measurement. As long as it's close, we'll be okay. All right. Nine quarts of bottled water. And I will run inside and get uh, eight quarts then of water from the tap. So we've got in our pot what comes out to just over four gallons, uh, four gallons, one quart. So we're going to light this and start getting it up to our target temperature of 168.4 degrees is our target. Now, will we hit that exactly? No, of course not. All right. Flame is on. And I'm going to see if I can adjust the airflow here. That's about what we want. I can't really show you that flame very well, but we got it cranked up pretty good. Um, and I'm going to stick a lid on this so that we can get it. Um, up to that temperature quicker. So the water's been heating for a little while now, and I'm not gonna put the camera over the pot to show you uh, because the lens would get all steamed up, but 133 degrees-ish is what we're at right now. And we're just gonna keep watching it to get up to our 160 something that our target is. And now it's just a waiting game to get our water up to the right temperature. In the meantime, I have been getting ready the cooler that we're going to use to mash in. Now, you don't have to have this. Um, I've only used this, actually, the last time I brewed was the first time I'd used this um, big cooler. And it is a, yeah, it's a 10 gallon. And the guy that had it before me installed a bowl valve right here, which is really nice. Um, it does kind of get dirty in there, though, so you do have to clean it out. And it looks like I need to give it a little more cleaning before we start brewing. But, um, yeah, this is going to be really good for keeping our mash temperature where we want it to be for, um, for longer so that we don't have to do as many temperature adjustments throughout the brew cycle. Uh, what I'm going to do to preheat this cooler is go inside, get my tap water running pretty hot, and get about five gallons in here and just let it sit until we're ready to use it. Um, that way, the air that's in the insulating part of the cooler here can heat up and the cooler itself can heat up and we won't lose as much temperature when we pour the water from our kettle into the cooler to mash into. Okay, um, I think I probably overshot our water temperature by a little bit, uh, but that's okay. No, we are at 167.9. 168.8, 169 degrees. That's actually perfect because uh, we're probably going to lose a degree or two when we pour it into our uh, mash vessel, even though um, we preheated this a little bit. Okay, I think we are ready. We've got a clean mash kettle. I'm going to go ahead and pop this hose off just so it's not getting in our way for now. You can definitely see where it's really handy to have a table to set everything on, uh, and it fills up quick. 
I have to tell you. Okay, um, let me get our water dumped into here. Let me do one final check on the temperature. Okay, we're up over 170 already. Yikes. That didn't take long at all. Okay. So, so we're like 172 on our temperature. I'm going to go ahead and do my best to get this into this without burning myself. Um, so I'm going to set it on the ground. And... Oh, this is tough. You can really use a hot pad or something similar. Let me try it like this. Yeah, this is a little dangerous to do it this way. Oh, that's working, okay. You probably can't see what I'm doing on the camera, but that's all right. Okay, our water's in. And I'll lift this back up onto the table. And let's get temperature measurement now, picking out. A little floaty there. Hey, that's hot. I want this grain to be the right temperature now so we don't have to adjust it later. I know I've said that a hundred times, but. Okay, we're at 170, 171, about 171 and a half. So I'm just gonna let that sit for half a second and that's gonna give me time to adjust things and get my grain ready. I like this. Um, a little better than doing it in the kettle. Though there are a few more steps and there's a little more risk for hot side aeration. But using the tube to drop the liquid down into the pot, we should um, mitigate most of that. Okay, looks like we're gonna level out at 168 degrees on here. So we're gonna go ahead and mash in. And this step is definitely easier with somebody to help. But my help's not coming till a little later on today. <clears throat> okay, what I'm gonna be doing is adding the grain in slowly and stirring as I do. Oops, I managed to cut myself a little hole in the bag there. And flip it around. Yeah, much easier with help. But... Okay, what I'm trying not to do, trying to avoid, is getting big old dough balls up in there. And I realize at this point that in all this video making, I've already made a mistake. I forgot to put my bag in. Um, that is not going to be very good. Shoot, I gotta figure out what to do now. Because I've already got my grain in here and started mashing it and I don't have my filter bag. All right, little bit of a challenge, but we're gonna get past it. Okay, wouldn't be a brewing session if I didn't make a mistake of some sort. So we're gonna try to fix this real quick without losing too much temperature. I'm gonna stick my brew bag in the kettle. Cinch it down a little bit and then dump all my water and the grain that I have back into the pot. That's going to get most of it out of there for us. It always turns out all right, even though I end up making mistakes like this. Since we are in, since we're in this, I don't really want to make another transfer back to the um, cooler. So we're gonna go ahead and mash in in the brew pot. Not a big deal, I guess. 
just wasted some time on getting the brew or the cooler ready, but that's all I guess. So we'll get the rest of the grain in here. Keep that stirred up so as to break up any clumps and get the water evenly on everything. Trying to stir it in and mash it in gently. All right, it's starting to smell amazing. And that's something, one of the best parts about brewing your own beer is the smells along the way. All right, let me go ahead and dump it in. It's much easier to have a second person holding the bag and slowly dumping uh, while the other person is using the mash paddle. All right, let me break up. There you can see in. So I've got clumps. Because I dumped it in all at once, I've got all these clumps on the top, and I need to break those up. So what we're making is almost a, a thick cereal in here and actually it is you could eat it probably wouldn't taste great but you know it's all barley okay most of those clumps are broken up pretty well i'm going to keep mashing for a minute here with my paddle to get everything make sure everything is good and Okay, I think we are set up just how I want it. So let's check the temperature and see if after all of that uh, tomfoolery, we ended up with the target temperature we're shooting for of 152 degrees. I'm going to be shocked, but it looks like we're going to make it. All right, we may be sitting just over 152.5. That is perfect. That'll give us a little room to go down. All right. Let's get the lid on the pot here to hold in some of that heat. And I'm going to wrap it with towels after all. Uh, just a pack of binder clips that I use for this. get a couple of these out and this is nothing fancy and it doesn't work near as well as the cooler but we would end up losing more heat in transferring it again so I'm just gonna wrap these towels around and it is 60 about 65 degrees out here right now so this is not near as bad as if it were something like uh, you know, 20 degrees. Okay, so we've got our little insulation clipped on, nothing fancy. And chances are we're gonna have to do a couple of more um, temperature adjustments because of my little snafu there. So uh, we're gonna let this sit. I'm gonna not check it too often. Um, oh, what I forgot to mention is I have started a timer for 60 minutes. That's how long this grain needs to sit in here before we do anything to it. Start a 50 minute timer. Setting the timer. Your timer is set for 50 minutes. All right, so I'm going to check this about every 15 minutes as we go and make sure the temperature stays up in that 152 degree area. But I don't want to mess with it too much because obviously every time I take off the lid, we lose heat. Um, so I will come back to you when we do our first temperature adjustment. All right, so we're waiting on our grains in here. They're just sitting. The sugars are converting. Um, I, or I should say the starches are converting to sugars in our grain. I've moved this pot with the grain and our brewing water off of the burner because I'm going to start heating the um, rest of the water for the rest of the batch. We need 16.5 quarts more total. Now you can do this on the stove, um, but I choose to 
have another a separate pot and this is a um another brewing kettle and it can be used for doing your whole batch in i believe this is an eight gallon but i like to use it to heat the rest of the water that way we're going to have our entire volume of water that we need for the rest of brewing right here in this kettle that way we don't have to worry about numbers anymore and we just use this kettle until it's gone so we're going to measure out um two gallons and a half quart uh, good enough all right and let's get that water heated up now this water i want to keep um well i will go ahead and boil it because for the temperature adjustments it's most easy to make calculations when you boil the water whoops i only have one lid i just about took it off my um off the kettle that i'm using to mash but i don't want to do that so it'll have to be lidless which will be fine get that fire going and get that water to boiling while that's starting to boil um, we're at about the 17 minute mark so let's get a temperature check on our mash I usually swirl it around in here just a little bit to get it to an accurate temperature spot Okay, we're still at we're still at 152 degrees. That is awesome. The longer it stays at that temperature, um, the more it's going to do exactly what we want it. I'm not going to get into all the science on this, though I'm really tempted because um, it's a really fascinating subject. But this video would get way too long, way too quick if we tried to do that. So I'm going to skip all that. If you're interested in learning all that stuff, I would suggest reading How to Brew um, by, I believe, John Palmer. It's a great book. It goes way in depth into the science and it'll get you a really good understanding about how all of this works. All right, we are about 30 minutes into our mash. So time to check the temperature again. And I'm guessing that we are gonna have to um, do an infusion this time. Oh, not doing too bad though. We're 151. Let me check in a couple different spots, but we're still actually hovering right around 152. That is excellent. I don't think I've ever had this before. All right, let's uh, stick the lid back on and we'll go another 15 minutes. Of course, no brewing session would be complete without beer. And since ours won't be ready for about six weeks, um, today I am drinking the um, Nut Brown Ale by Blackstone Brewing Company in Nashville. Uh, if you ever find this beer, it's really good. Um, pick it up. It's great brown ale. Cheers. All right, 15 minutes left on our mash timer. So let's... Uh, Give things just a little stir here. That liquid is turning the perfect golden brown. Let's see what our temperature is. If uh, we're still around 151 or 152, we're not gonna bother making any adjustments. We'll just let it go all the way till the end. 151.7, that is pretty darn close. All right, water on the burner, it's fired back up. Uh, we're going to need this water to be approximately 170 degrees pretty soon. The very next step um, after our timer runs out and that's been sitting for uh, the last 15 minutes of its 60 minute mash is to bring the temperature of it up to 170 degrees and let it sit there for 10 minutes. That's called mash out and uh, from what I've read it makes it brings up the efficiency level some. Um, I'm not sure quite how much but I need every little bit that I can get with my slightly less efficient brew in a bag method. Alright regrettably I did um, forget to turn the camera on for this but 
uh, with about 10 minutes to go, I checked the temperature again, and it had dropped to like 157-ish, so I added about two quarts of boiling water to bring the temperature back up to 152, 153-ish. Um, so that's where it's sitting now. There's about five minutes left on the timer. I'm actually going to let it go about another 10 to 15, um, just so that it can sit for that amount of time at our proper mashing temperature. Um, I would hate to have a temperature drop like that where it sat for you know, not longer than five or ten minutes. Um, but I would hate to have a temperature drop like that affect the efficiency that we get in the end and end up um, with a lower uh, bodied uh, n beer, not what we're shooting for. So I'm going to let it sit there for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll go to mash out. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. Um, what I'm going to do is pull this over to the burner, take off the towels, of course. Otherwise, we'd scorch them. Oh, that's heavy. Okay, so there are two ways to raise the temperature to mash out. Um, the first way, and a way that a lot of people use, and it's perfectly fine, is to add boiling water to bring the temperature up to the target, which is like 170. Because we only have a limited extra volume for our sparge water, um, which I'll explain what that is in a minute here. I don't want to do that. Uh, we'd have to add 8.6 quarts according to the calculation to bring the temperature up to 170 degrees from 153 that it's at now. So what I'm going to do instead is light the burner and hold the bag up off the bottom. Uh, were this um, just in a mash tun without a brew in the bag type bag on it, we could just uh, kind of stir it and um, have the heat applied. But I don't want to do that because uh, we'll end up scorching the bag and that's not good, obviously. So let's light the burner here. Set the lid aside. Okay. I'm gonna light the burner and raise the bag up off of the bottom and yes I am gonna have to hold it here well let me see okay I'll get it up off the bottom uh, I'm not gonna be able to get it enough up off the bottom and clip it in place so we'll get it up off the bottom and just kind of hold it there for now and I'm gonna crank this heat up because this grain bag is heavy and I'll kind of rock it back and forth so it's not staying in one place too long. And up and down. I'm going to give this just a minute and then I'm going to shut off the flame and check the temperature. Again, this is much easier with two people, um, but my second person is not here yet. but I don't want to go too far uh, because if we get it too hot, we could actually extract more tannins than we want from the grain. And that ends up with a, a, a flavor you really don't want. Oh, you gotta take a look at this, this color. Well, there's foam forming on the top now. But this color is absolutely gorgeous. All right, let's check this temperature and make sure it's where we want it. And then I'll put the lid on and set a timer for 10 minutes. Let's try this again. Again, breaking up that grain to get it thoroughly mixed in. So when we pull it out and the liquid starts to drain out, it all clumps together. So we've got to break that up again, not sloshing it around too much. Again, we don't want hot side aeration. <clears throat>
All right, we've got almost 168 in places. So I'm just gonna cap that. It's only gonna sit at this temperature for 10 minutes anyway. So I'm gonna cap that, leave it sit for 10 minutes, and then we'll go into um, the sparging. This camera is doing really excellently at picking up things in low light. Um, you probably can't tell, but it is almost, it's actually probably sunset right now. It's uh, just after 7 p.m. and sun's going down. This camera is doing really good at picking up in low light. I'm really happy with it. Um, we will be switching over to um, infrared on the camera so that you can see after a while. But for right now, it's uh, picking up good color still, so I'm happy with that. Anyway, we're letting this sit. Um, the time is, well, it was 7.10 um, when I got the temperature up to where I wanted it, and we're letting it set. So at 7.20, we will mash out. Um, one note, though, I'm having to switch back and forth because I only have the one burner. I'm having to switch things back and forth, and between heating this water and heating the kettle, uh, that'll be over here in just a second. We won't have to do that anymore. The water in my kettle that we're going to be using as sparge water dropped to about 125 degrees while it was sitting there. Again, I don't have a lid for that kettle. So I'm heating that back up now while our mash out is happening over here. See, we got about eight more minutes. I'm going to get that up to temperature and then we're actually going to pull the grain out of the liquid. Uh, get it sparged and then we'll take a measurement and hopefully we're uh, where we want to be. All right, 720, we're going to take the grain out and sparge it. I picked up this grate a couple of years ago, for do or maybe a year ago for doing this, and it uh, helps a whole lot. Otherwise, i got to hold this bag that's probably about 25 pounds for about 30 minutes. <clears throat> Trying to let some of that liquid drain out of there. <sighs> all right, try to get this situated so that all the liquid flows down into the kettle. This bag is a little oddly shaped. <laughs> and then, you wanna hand me that ladle? Thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> then for an agonizing 20 minutes, <laughs> I'm gonna ladle the hot water. That should be around 170 degrees over the grain to rinse the rest of the sugars out. <clears throat> all right, so I'm just gonna keep doing this uh, until all the water that's left in my sparge kettle is gone and emptied out over here. It is gonna take quite a while, so I'm not going to uh, have all that on the video. But we'll get that done and then come back when it we uh, start the boil. Okay, uh, so we ran into a problem. I don't think we have enough volume in the kettle to do our boil. We're sitting right about there, which looks to me like five gallons, and we really should be closer to seven and a half at this point. Um, thankfully, our specific gravity at this point is sitting at about 1060 to 1065. I'm double checking that by stirring it. We really want our gravity right now to be around 1043 before the boil. Because we're gonna lose about gonna lose about two gallons of volume. So I'm gonna take another sample here. <clears throat> and test the specific gravity again. Alright, yeah, we're at actually between 1065 and 1070 right now. So we definitely need to water things down a bit. I'm gonna start, um, probably go something like a quart at a time. 
until our volume is what we need it to be. But that means I need to heat some water <coughs> up to 170 degrees and we'll use that as more sparge. Oh, I bet I didn't account for the amount of liquid the grain would absorb. That's what I did wrong. This, the calculator that I used changed and it doesn't look the same as it did. And I'm wondering if it works differently than it used to. Oh yeah, it says I need, it's got it in here, I just wasn't looking. 8.3 gallons it says should be the total and I've only used 7.5 so it's probably going to need another three a little more than three quarts uh, I guess I'll run some more from the faucet All right, I have never had this problem before um, But when I looked at my calculator again, it shows the total volume at 8.3 gallons and I've only put in seven and a half so far so we're going to need uh, eight tenths of a gallon more water uh, total. So I'm heating that now and we'll run it through our grain as more sparge. Um, uh, but so that we hit our target gravity in the end, I'm going to go court by court and measure the gravity until we get to 1043 and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I have the sparge water heated to 170 degrees. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start out with two quarts because I'm fairly certain it'll take three to almost four. <clears throat> so I'll start out with two quarts, pour it over the grain real slow, and then I will stir the wart and take a measurement of specific gravity again. Certainly wouldn't be one of my brewing sessions without a mistake or two. <clears throat> All right, things will start going a lot quicker from here. I've added a total of three and a half quarts to this and we've only got it down to around 10.50-ish, uh, 10.55, 10 somewhere in there. But we're gonna go with it because I don't want to water it down too much more. So let's file, fire up the kettle and get it to a boil. I need a... I'd made a dipstick at one point. What do you, what do you think? If 10... Because 10 gallons, I know, is ten gallons about is right to there. The uh, to, about to the rim. I mean... Would you say that's seven? Or seven and I a half? I was going with seven, yeah. Okay. Yeah, certainly six to seven. So. I've almost got a notion to add, just add a little more water. Otherwise, it's going to boil off too much. All right, one final measurement after adding another quart, and we are finally down to uh, 1045, where we want it to be. 1043 is what the computer said. I'm going with 1045, because it's a more round number. <clears throat> so we're starting the boil. Um, let's look and see what our first hop addition will be once it starts boiling. We'll have an ounce of, just one ounce of nugget and that'll be our bittering hop at the beginning of the boil. <clears throat> oh, once this starts boiling, it will foam up almost to the rim. It's kind of crazy. So we'll have to keep a good watch and be stirring. As soon as we add the first hop addition, the nugget, we will uh, start a 60 minute timer and that'll be how long we'll run the boil for. While we do that, uh, we're gonna need to be cleaning and sanitizing everything else that we're gonna use, including the carboy, um, the rack and siphon, all of the tubing, everything is gonna have to be sanitized. Otherwise the beer will, um, or the wort rather, will pick up uh, any bacteria or wild yeast on the way through the tubing and it'll become infected. Uh, 
Okay, and we have the start of a hot break. Which y'all probably can't see through the steam on the camera. Oh yeah, you can. I guess the infrared cuts through it. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, turning the heat down. You can see that foam starting to come up on the sides of the kettle. Okay, we'll add our first hop addition and start our timer. Making sure this is the nugget. Yeah. Hop's going in. And we're going to get a second, probably a pretty big hot break. Yeah, there it is. Smells like a pine tree is floating out of the kettle now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to... Keep adjusting the flame until we can keep it at a boil, but not a an extremely violent boil. Because uh, the higher we have the heat, the more liquid loss we'll have and steam. Your timer is set for one hour. Okay, um, so we're not going to add anything else until. 10 minutes from the end of the boil, actually 15, is when we'll put the chiller in and get it um, heat sanitized by the boiling liquid. Uh, but now I'm going to go ahead and wash everything else and get my sanitizer solution ready in uh, the carboy. Okay, sanitizer in here should... Oh yeah, it's still got foam on the top, so it's still good. Sanitizer has a pH, I believe, of about 2.5. Mm -hmm. And that's like close to battery acid, isn't it? It is, but it's not a very concentrated acid. It's a very dilute acid. Oh. So it's perfectly safe for your hands. You could drink it and be fine. It's uh, about like lemon juice. Gotcha. I don't pretend to know exactly how um, how that works, because you, could, from the way I understand it, you could have a more concentrated acid that's at the same pH, and it would be, you know, like caustic to your skin. Right. But I don't know how that works. Hmm. Not at all. Yep. Nope. <laughs> Still don't do chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> seconds of contact with this stuff is what it takes to sanitize. Hmm. But I don't remember. So I've always been told that a hot break could happen anytime and it's actually settled down quite a bit now from what it was just a second ago. But we are 23 minutes from the end of the boil, and uh, it's a good thing I was looking over towards the boil kettle because we were about there on the edge, like two inches from the top. And yeah, it's completely over now. But uh, just a minute ago, the foam was all the way up on the edge there, and it was about to boil over. So I cut the heat down and started stirring, and uh, it went down, and we've got a good boil going again but that was something new okay we are 15 minutes till the end of the boil so i'm gonna put in my immersion chiller and get it sanitized and when i put it in it's going to stop the boil momentarily because it'll cool it down and you can hear the water that's inside try to steam out okay so that's in uh, I gotta watch my timer because five minutes before the end of the boil is when I need to add some more hops. But right now, at 15 minutes, the other thing I'm gonna add is a teaspoon of Irish moss and a half teaspoon of uh, yeast nutrient. And that'll boil in. And I'll get the hose to hook up to the immersion chiller. 
All right, we're now at five minutes till the end of the boil. I'm gonna turn the flame down. Okay, uh, two ounces of mosaic and one ounce of citra. Going in, oh yeah. There's the other mosaic. I should have, if I'd been thinking earlier, should have put all of those hops in a bag so that I could filter them out. In like a tea bag sort of thing. Because that's going to create all kinds of junk in the bottom of here when we get all done. And one thing I forgot to do is put the lid of the kettle kind of back over to steam sanitize it a little bit. But while doing that, I'm going to have to turn the heat down because it'll also hold more heat in the kettle and want to boil over more. Uh, I think we should be getting close to the end. Yes. We were one second. Okay, the flame's going out. stir to knock down the rest of that foam and we will start the immersion chiller going. Now I want the rate going through the chiller to be pretty slow at first because we're gonna be wasting a whole lot of water here and it can only the chiller can only get out as much heat it, it can only get out so much heat at a time so we'll leave that out, and it would help to take the lid off to cool things down faster, but again, we don't really want to catch things on there. So I'm just going to circulate the chiller through the liquid by moving it around a little bit. And this is another time that I don't want to, I don't want to slosh it, because aeration into the wart at this point is uh, not a good thing. So about 20 to 30 minutes of this, and we should be down to uh, yeast pitching temperature, which is going to be, you know, between a little over 70 degrees, and that'll be fine. We're going to try to keep the temperature of the beer around between 65 and 70 while it's fermenting. So that's a, a decent temperature to, to get it down to to pitch the yeast at. A little higher than that won't hurt, though. But were we to throw the yeast in there right now, it would kill it. So I talked in the beginning of, of the video about uh, how the yeast hadn't been activated yet. Well, here you can see that the bag is all puffed up. It's blown up like a balloon now. And uh, we're ready to, well, we're not ready to pitch it yet, but we need to get the bag and the scissors both that we're going to use to cut it open into the sanitizer because they're there's stuff on the outside of the bag that we don't want to get into. <clears throat> so we'll just let all of that sit in. And we'll let it sit there until pretty much we're ready to use it. Probably seems excessive, um, but now that our wort is cooling, anytime we take a temperature measurement, we're going to sanitize the temperature probe. We're at... 128 degrees, so it is cooling down from, you know, 212 when we first started. Yeah, 129 is what it got up to there, so we'll keep chilling, and I suppose we've been doing it for about two minutes, so another, another 10 to 20 should do it. 79 degrees, 78 points, somewhere close to there. Um, that's going to be good for now. Now, let me show you what the surface of this liquid looks like right now. Okay, the top of our beer is looking pretty uh all kinds of junk floating in it right now that stuff will start to settle out within a few minutes uh, i've been circulating it circulating that immersion chiller all through it and that's why it's still all in suspension it'll start settling out in a few minutes here um so we're gonna get it over to the tabletop and then just let it sit. You can see kind of right at the edges of this chiller, it's starting to settle. And it'll do that more um, over the course of the next few minutes. What we want to try to do is siphon the liquid off of that stuff. We're probably going to get about half of it 
in the carboy, but that's okay. Okay, um, what we're gonna do now is move the wart from this, and looking at it now, it definitely looks like it's under five gallons, which is too bad. <laughs> but uh, we've got this sanitized with the star sand. I initially had it full of it, and then just now put some more in and swished it around. The cap is sitting in the star sand right now. Um, our yeast, our blown up bag of yeast is sitting in there as well as the scissors. The racking cane that we're gonna use has also been in there. I'm gonna get all of the, or the, the standing liquid anyway, out of the racking cane and out of the tube, and try not to touch this to anything. Try to get it to drain out there. It's not gonna hurt the beer if it gets in it, but I still don't want any more than necessary. Okay, we'll get this down in the jug. The reason I'm using the racking cane is so that I can get, go just below the surface of the liquid and pump it out and use a gravity siphon to get it in there so that I can try to stay above the level of sediment. I'll show you what it's going to look like in here. Well, you probably won't be able to see very well. Oh yeah, at least a little bit. All right, we'll connect up the tube. And I'm gonna try not to disturb the liquid any more than I have to. We'll get it just below the surface. And it'll take a couple. There we go. Pump strokes to get it flowing through. And now it's going through the tube and down into our jug and it'll just keep flowing until this thing's empty. But I'm gonna have to watch it the whole time and uh, keep the end of the racking cane below the surface of the liquid. And that's all there is to it. So we made the unfortunate error of still winding up short on our volume. We've got four gallons and the original gravity is 1080. Um, we want 1064. What I'm probably gonna have to do is add close to a gallon of liquid to get this down to 1064. But I'm gonna start out with three half liter bottles. And I've sanitized the, the lids and the tops. I better stick my the mash paddle. I'm gonna stick my mash paddle in the sanitizing water because I'll have to stir this up somehow. Though 1080 might make good beer, it would certainly be strong. All right, I was not expecting that amount of water to do the job, but it certainly did. Uh, we're sitting just over, just over three gallons now on our total volume. Four gallons, I mean. Um, and we've got our gravity of 1065, only, only one thousandth over where we wanna be, and I'm calling that good enough. So I'm gonna cap this off, and we're gonna do something that looks a little silly, but we're gonna shake the heck out of it. So we're trying to get the oxygen that's up in here down into solution. That way the yeast can reproduce right off the bat 
and uh, then when they finish using up that oxygen, they will go to anaerobic respiration. So I'm gonna shake the heck out of it. Then uh, pull my hand off and let it breathe for a second. Open up the top so I can get some fresh air in. <clears throat> and then I'll shake it again for another minute or two. And then we'll pitch the yeast. Kind of shake it around the package to get all the clumps off the sides. I always smell everything. Yep, smells like yeast. For sure. Now there's a little plastic package in there I'm going to try not to dump. Oh gosh. I'm going to try not to dump in there with it. But we'll dump all that suspended yeast in. I'll grab onto that packet. And... Okay. So. That is the brewing cycle. There are several more steps that we'll do. Um, we're gonna take this down after we get the airlock in it. We're gonna take this down and I'm gonna store this at about 64 degrees if I can. Okay, there's actually the perfect amount of air in the, or sanitizer left in this bubbler. Yeah, maybe I'll get just a little bit more. There, that's better. Um, this right here keeps stuff from getting down into it, but lets excess carbon dioxide escape through this bubble trap. Uh, I will show you that in a couple of days once it gets to fermenting. Um, actually, it won't be a couple of days. It'll only be 12 hours or so. So we'll stick this. <clears throat> we'll stick this right in the top through the hole in the stopper nice tight fit and this whole thing is going to go down in the basement like I said at about 64 to 65 degrees and um, we're going to keep a thermometer in there so we can keep an eye on the temperature and we'll come back once this gets to fermenting now right now it has a cap of foam on the top and that is um, just foam from shaking it all up but in a day or so it's going to have a cap of active yeast on the top and that's called the Krausen and I'll show you what that is when we get to it. In this messy basement we have our beer going and I've kind of got it shielded from the sunlight that comes in from these basement windows over here and you can see the activity in the bubbler. It is fermenting. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see down in there, but there is a Krausen on the top of the liquid, and that's good. So it's fermenting along just like it should. Um, this is about 2 o'clock in the afternoon on the day after it was brewed. So uh, we're going to let it sit for about two more weeks here in this container and then we will um, actually take the beer from this and put it in a glass carboy that's quite a bit smaller and it'll continue to ferment there for another two weeks um, and then about a week before we bottle it or keg it, whichever I decide to do, we will um, add some more hops to it to dry hop for about seven days. All right, it is about one week before uh, either bottling or putting this in a keg. So I have got an ounce of citra and an ounce of mosaic that are going to go in. Now, this process is real easy. I'm just going to tear off the top and dump it in. Not worried about really sanitizing these. Oh, and I have broken my airlock. 
So I had better get a new one. But let me grab the grab it by the right part here. Pry out this stopper. That beer is smelling fantastic. Alright. Let's dump in the ounce of mosaic. Most of it in there without spilling. And the ounce of citra. The reason I'm not sanitizing the package is because hops are naturally antibacterial and I'm just not going to worry about it. Alright, so I will get a new airlock in my stopper and put that back in. And we'll let it sit about another five to seven days before we do anything else with it. Here we are over at my uh, kegerator. There is some beer sitting in the line. So I'm going to pull a little bit out and discard it. Because I don't want to drink that beer that was sitting in the line for the last couple of days. I'm not going to show you the kegging process. That's something for another video. But at some point maybe I'll show you the kegging and carbonating. But here we are. Good thick head on that. Nice kind of darkish amber beer with that nice thick head. Mmm, and some uh, real good hot flavor with a, a clean, balanced bitterness on the back end. Hey y'all, so you can see that there's a lot different color to the trees and the grass back here, and that is because I made this video and then forgot about it until just now uh, when I went back and put together parts of this video and shot the last bit of it, which you're seeing right now. Um, that was back in the spring. This is the end of September 2019, and we are going to be doing another brewing project here soon. Uh, that beer that I brewed in this video is all gone. We drank the whole thing. Uh, it was delicious. You saw it just for a second in the glass there at the end of the last video, um, but we are going to be brewing a uh, nut brown ale to drink over the fall and the first part of the winter. So I hope you'll join us for that uh, here in a little bit. It's going to be a completely different type of brewing video and a much shorter one, I promise. Uh, this is just kind of an overview, kind of a vlog of um, that last brewing session that I did back in the spring. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe to the channel. There's going to be more brewing here more fermentation type projects to come because uh, that is one thing that I'm really interested in and it's something different than our normal uh, reloading, shooting, hunting sort of thing that we have here on the channel. So again, I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, have a good one.